Hi, this is Anna Imagination with The Healing Garden. So I was going through this and I went, oh, son of a bitch, I understand what we did. Because it's the same thing I'm doing. And I'm like, oh my God, must preserve. I'm gonna tell you a story. Two days ago, I went to the grocery store and I read an article on the way to the grocery store that absolutely stunned me. It was written by a doctor in philosophy who was an ontologist. I'm an ontologist. And he was explaining his philosophical opinion of ontology, metaphysics, and philosophy. And he was speaking on behalf of everybody in the field, all philosophers today. And he said, he used words like discredited, nonsense, ridiculous, conjecture. And he explained how they were discussing cutting it. Now, that is, that hit me on many levels. First, it hit me on the realization that philosophers today were victim to the US government educational system. So they did not learn Plato's curriculum. It came to me as a huge blow because they did not learn Plato's curriculum. They did not follow it, if they even know about it. Third, I lost any hope of having philosophical peers. Fourth, they were talking about destroying education. In 380 CE, the Holy Roman Empire declared war on education. We have one rule. You don't burn the books. And in 380 CE, the Holy Roman Empire did just that. They targeted Alexandria and took her out, the entire city. Not just the university, not just the library, the city. You cannot look into my work and research it without finding this about me, where I talk about Rome. My true hatred is for Rome because I have a problem with anyone who declares war on knowledge. And that is what the Holy Roman Empire did. I asked the question, why? And I asked the question, what happened because Rome was flourishing in the Dark Ages? 100 years after they destroyed Alexandria, the epicenter of knowledge, the educational capital of the world, we started the Dark Ages. That is the impact it had. This book, A World Lit Only by Fire, was the catalyst of my knowledge. It shows you exactly what happens when education is removed from a culture. And it starts in 380 CE. It gives you some preliminary work. It shows you everything. By the time I read this book, I had already found the genius code. I'd already uploaded it into my own brain. And I already was smarter than Einstein by 20 points. So when I read that book, what I read was different than what everybody else was talking about. They were talking about how Rome fell. I know business. Rome didn't fall. There were two Roman empires, two. There was a king, an emperor, and he had two sons, and he split the Roman empire. We know this, Eastern Roman empire and the Western Roman empire. The Western Roman empire is what was defeated. So the Western Roman empire ran to his brother's kingdom, the Eastern Roman empire. Rome didn't fall. That happened around the first, second century. And in 320 CE, they legalized Christianity. 60 years later, they announced their new name, the Holy Roman Empire, and they made the Holy Roman Christian religion the official religion of the Roman Empire.
They rebranded themselves. They did not fall. Hello, Roman Catholicism. They didn't fall. They rebranded themselves publicly. Prior to 380, and I do mean like a year before, in 380 CE, they received a prediction from the philosophers that Rome would fall. And I hypothesize that they were so upset with that information that they burned down Alexandria. Now, when they made the official religion and rebranded themselves the Holy Roman Empire, that same year, they legalized or made illegal, they made illegal astrology. They declared the Christian religion the official religion and they burned down Alexandria. A hundred years later, they targeted the second world's largest education center, Ireland, who were putting out philosopher bards and they sent a man to destroy it. His name was St. Patrick. St. Patrick did not destroy the religion and the educational center. He went and he preserved it. He lied to them, saying, oh yeah, it's destroyed, it's destroyed. And then he nurtured and built the first church, which actually turned into a temple where they replicated everything that they were doing to an extent, most everything that they were doing over at Alexandria. He created a new Alexandria. In the 1600s, Rome figured this out. They went in and they destroyed Ireland. There was over 50% of the population destroyed. They killed all of the bards, the last bard, and they destroyed all the knowledge. Prior to that, in the 1100s, the Crusades, the Islamic Golden Age rose up in the 800s. And about by, well, by the 1100s, there was, the Crusades went off. At that point, the Islamic Golden Age had received such a vast amount of knowledge and wisdom that they were reverse engineering the academic discipline of mathematics and they had invented our Arabic numbers, which we use to this day. One, two, three, four. Those are Arabic numbers developed from reverse engineering the academic discipline that would become modern arithmetic. And it came from the Islamic golden age. When the Holy Roman Empire realized this, they went in and slaughtered them. That's what the Crusades were about. It was the war on wisdom, knowledge, education. And it has been waged by the Holy Roman Empire since 380 CE. Anyone who was smart, anyone who was wise, any genius rose up and they were slaughtered. We know this. Galileo, Copernicus. Da Vinci was the first one who survived. I don't know why. I don't know how he did it. I suspect that he figured out what I figured out, which was they're killing the geniuses. They're killing off the smart people. Don't let them know you're smart or you better be sure you're in a position of power. Now, Da Vinci was, he was in a position of power and he was a renowned Christian, but in actuality, he was mocking the Christian religion, which is very clear in all of his work. Now he leads a lot of clues, but here's the thing. As soon as they figure out that you're onto them, they kill you. So, begins the game. Da Vinci started to hide clues inside of his artwork so that people who read his work, studied it, would start to put together the clues. But you have to know where to look. Shakespeare did it. He figured out the same thing. He made the same conclusion. If they figure out you're smart, if they figure out what you know, they'll kill you. So he embedded it in all of his plays. I found them. And then Cervantes did it. Cervantes figured it out. Now he was already in prison, 20 years in a prison and he wrote Don Quixote. He had the God code and he knew if you say it, they'll kill you. He lived during the Spanish Inquisition. So he wrote Don Quixote to hide the knowledge that he found. We have been working together for over 1600 years, finding the knowledge, putting the pieces together, having the same conclusions, and then hiding them. Now people, every now and then, someone else would find the next clue, we would figure it out, we'd go, there's something here. 
and then we would solve it. We would put it together. We would riddle it out. And then we would write something magnificent, a painting, a piece of music, and we would hide it in the art. That's why they burn the art. We were literally passing on all of academia preserved from Pythagoras's time period in the philosophers that was stored in Alexandria through our art through the centuries. And we hid all of it in clues, the true knowledge, the true educational system inside all of the artwork. This is what I discovered when I studied under Plato. What I found was the original ancient Greek educational system that Rome declared war on. In the year 1088 CE, when the educational system became so fucking abysmal that the king himself declared that he was greater than grammar, that is when they realized we should probably start education up again. So in 1088 in Bologna, Italy, they made their first university but they did not have any knowledge. They had to piecemeal together what little they could find in the dark ages. After they destroyed everything, there was nothing left. The educational systems of today are based off of that piecemealed garbage from the dark ages of 1088 CE. Meanwhile, the educators, the geniuses, Da Vinci, Cervantes, Shakespeare, when we started to figure it out and piece it together, we used our art to hide it and pass it down from generation to generation. Milton has a piece. Ayn Rand has a piece. Lord of the Flies has a piece. Brave New Heart, I'm sorry, Brave New World has a piece. Carl Jung has a piece. Lord of the Flies has a piece. John Irving has a piece. Sophie's World has a piece. Les Miserables has a piece. They all have a piece. Every great book has a piece. But you got to read the great books. And you have to study Plato. And you have to follow Plato's curriculum. No one has studied Plato's curriculum. And that's the problem. Now, if you read the great books and you follow art, you'll figure it out. But if you follow Plato's curriculum, you'll really figure it out you'll figure, figure it out really fucking fast. So that's what we've been doing, piecing this thing together bit by bit. Dan Brown figured it out to an extent, but he had, only, he had a very small fraction and there's more fiction in his books than, he knew Da Vinci was part of it. He figured it out, but he didn't quite figure it out. He published too soon. He published too soon. Douglas Adams was the last one. Douglas Adams was the last one to release something that was that accurate. And I take it back, J.K. Rowling. J.K. Rowling. But I'm eyeing her because it's intuition and you reverse engineer it from nature. So either you're really tuned into Mother Nature and you figure it out or you academically figure it out. I did both. I can't tell if J.K. Rowling instinctively figured it out and intuitively put it together or if she was consciously aware of it. Da Vinci was consciously aware of it. Cervantes was consciously aware of it. Ayn Rand was consciously aware of it. J.K. Rowling, I can't tell if it was consciously aware of it or intuitively aware of it, but it's in her books. Steven Spielberg, pretty sure he's consciously aware of it. Pretty sure he's consciously aware of it. He's the one who did Da Vinci Code, right? Pretty sure he's consciously aware of it. Because I've been watching Steven Spielberg and I'm like, dude, like every every ethical perspective is in your books. I'm pretty sure you've got it, dude. Steven Spielberg, and, and every one of them, he's like, why are you here watching my movie again? Go enjoy live. Every one of his movies, he has the same message. Why are you watching my movies? Go live live. Yep, that is, that. thank you, Steven. So I'm looking at all of my books, seeing what else I've got here. Milton, Jules Verne, H.G. Wells. Yeah, they're all in on it. Every one of us. But Douglas Adams. Now, Douglas Adams knows what I know. And when I got to him, oh my God, it was hilarious. Because when you get to the end of it, you stop being serious and you start being funny. And you start going, oh, I'm going to totally do a game. So he did Douglas Adams, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. And I did the game. 
like an RIRL, RPG, NPC. Connect the dots. It, it, it's connect the dots, which is why it's Anna's dots, because it's connect the dots. But it's an R I I R L RPG. So when I gametized all of academia, that's what I did. Whoever can figure it out gets to solve the riddle. You ask the right question. Thank you, Duggins. You ask the right question. You solve the riddle. You figure it out. You figure it out. When you get to figure it out, you get to name it. So I got to name it. I called it the game. And then I built it. And there was a period of my life, like six months ago, where I went, are they going to kill me if I speak this out loud? Are, are we, is it safe to come out now? Is it safe to be seen? Is the Roman Empire still around? Or did they finally fall? The history books say they fell. Every time someone speaks this stuff aloud, they end up dead. So if anything happens to me, my network, my family, my children, my network's network, you know I'm right. You know they're still around. You know they're still around. That's really what I should have been saying this whole time, but I couldn't say it. Not until someone found the first dot. Not until stage two began. I was waiting for stage two. I went, yes, yeah, stage two has begun. It's finally time that I can start saying it. If anything happens to me, my children, my children's children, my network or my network's network, you know that Rome is still around. And if nothing happens, then we're safe. So I believe we can start talking about it now. I think it's time we can finally start talking about it. And I don't have to bury it in any of my artwork like everybody else has. We can actually tell you because it's safe now to come out. There is an educational system that was taken away from us in the year 380 CE when the Holy Roman Empire declared war on education. We have been out without several academic studies for over 1600 years. These are the same academic studies that was taught in Alexandria and in Ireland and were discovered in the Islamic Golden Age. I found them. I'm restoring them. That's what the healing garden is. It's 100% all the knowledge and education that was lost to us. It's the genius code. It's the solution to Tesla's 369 method. When Tesla couldn't figure it out, he also buried it in his inventions. And he's like, there's something here. 369, I can't figure it out, but this is the answer to life, the universe, and everything. And, and Douglas Adams and I are sitting here going, uh-huh, yeah, yeah, you got it, you got it, but you can't say it. So I'm saying it. The healing garden is the solution to Tesla's 369 method. It is the physics and mathematical formula, the logical code of the human being. I like to call it the human atom, it's a human atom. We're atoms. And it's the genius formula. You learn something in a very precise prerequisitional pattern, mathematical sequencing. It is the Fibonacci sequence and it unlocks your brain. The Fibonacci sequence is based off of this. This is the parent of the Fibonacci sequence. It's not, oh, look, another Fibonacci sequence. No, 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 no. It's the parent of the Fibonacci sequence. That's what I have. That is what the healing garden is. So that when you go through the 12 ethics, when you go through the game, when you go through Plato's curriculum, you are actually following the parent of the Fibonacci sequence. You are following the 12 ethical perspectives of human growth and evolution. I couldn't use the word evolution for a long time because again, I wasn't sure if it was safe. I had to make sure it was safe. So, I'm finally in stage two and I can finally say it. So the game is the resurrection and the return of the ancient Greek educational system that was lost to us in the year 380 CE. It is a completely different type of learning. It is a completely different style, completely different pattern. And it is unlike anything you have ever seen. And it makes everything we have 
obsolete. We are about to get one of the most amazing societal upgrades like you won't believe. Let me put it to you this way. Renaissance men are going to become the norm because the Renaissance men were the ones who found the formula. That's why they were Renaissance men. I have it and I'm giving it to all of you. That is what triadic healing is. Now, you don't get this information. You don't get the stuff and not know shit. You know shit. Oh, you know shit. Which is why I went, all right, I know shit. I know shit like how to cure mental illness. And I know shit like how to get us world peace. And I know shit like, well, look, it's the instruction manual for the subconscious mind. Isn't this amazing? I know exactly how everybody works. Wow, that got boring real fast. It really got boring real fast because suddenly I had the algorithms for all the Rubik's Cubes and all the world and I went, wow, that's boring now. So soon you will have all of this information. Now, it is easy with logic and physics. It is hard without logic and physics. So if you're going, oh my God, it's so hard, use logic and physics. I want you to imagine that all the wheels in the world were square. Every wheel in the world is now square. And you're all pushing your cars with square wheels and you're going, oh my God, it's so hard. Use physics, invent the wheel. So they use physics, they invent the wheel and they go, wow, it's so much easier. Cause physics and logic makes it easier. You've been living a life without logic and physics. That's why everything's hard. That's all. Those are the secrets of the universe. The universe speaks logic, physics, and mathematics. When you learn logic and physics, you could speak directly with mother nature. That's the language she speaks, which is why it's called nature's science or the natural science. Physics is nature's science. So I'm going to tell you right now, you don't need to know quantum physics. It's not rocket science. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> it's, it, it's classic physics. It's literally basic high school physics. And it's all you need with the rest of the formula. The order of operations matters. The sequencing matters. Those are key. It's not just cramming that stuff into your head. It must be done in the right order of operation. PEMDAS. The right order of operation matters. So it's also based off of Edgar. Oh, what is his name? I completely forgot just now. The dude who made the cone of learning. Can I, Edgar Dale, I want to say his name, his name is. And he did the cone of learning back in the 60s. It's also based off that. It's also spiral dynamics. People have asked me, Do you have you ever heard about spiral dynamics? Spiral dynamics is the pre pre preliminary. Like it, it is really, this is like spiral dynamics uh, on steroids with four cc's of adrenaline. It, it's ridiculous. This, this is spiral dynamics is this big. My work is this big, but it's, it's, it's like, yeah, yeah. This is, this is like, this is where if Nim had actually followed that trail with spiral dynamics, this is where it would have led them. So Literally, when you consume all of the great books, what you are actually doing is piecemealing and collecting all of the education that was lost to us. And it was not safe to bring out the education. So we had to hide it and pass it down from generation to generation. And the goal was to literally outlive the Roman Empire, to get the education to us, to this point where it was finally safe to bring out our education. And we were racing our own evolution because we didn't know if we were going to end up killing ourselves before we could get it to the end. There was a risk that this would not have made it, that we would have killed ourselves from our own lack of ethics and stupidity and uneducation if it did not survive. Had we not gotten a hold of this knowledge when we did, it would have been too late. So when we discovered all of this, it became dire that we get it to the next generation. And this is all we've been doing literally since da Vinci, passing it down from generation to generation to get it to this era where we could finally say out loud, they took our education away from us. Every time you burn a book, 
every time they burn artwork, what they are really burning is all of our education that keeps us alive. So we're finally able to bring it out. Try to killing is the summation of all of it. Oh, 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 and today I got all of law and justice. I am so excited. I am so excited. I have all of law and justice. So wow, we really fucked that up. So I'm going to be writing it all out and reverse engineering all of that. And well, I did, it's reverse engineered. I just got to translate it all. So uh, I have law and order. I have justice and I have the equilibrium now all done. So that I'm ready to just transfer over. That's a course I'm doing. I'm so, so excited about that one. Um, I have not done medical. I don't have medical. Uh, someone's going to have to do that because I have no interest in medical at this time. I have a feeling I'm going to care about medical in a couple years. So yeah. Um, there was two others that I haven't touched. I haven't touched astronomy. Astronomy, medical. So far, those are the only three academic disciplines I have not touched. So I know nothing about those three subjects. I know there's a couple more art, art well, painting, no, no painting. I, I, I can't do painting, but I've studied it. I think it's just those three. I think it's just those three. I'm studying quantum physics now, so. All right, enjoy the game. If you are ready to jump in the game, absolutely, it's on philosophers. It's it's on my try to killing the philosophers part four. There's no prerequisites and you can just activate the game and start going through it. It's not easy and it is not, it's, it's no, it's, it's I, don't, I don't know if it's hard. You're gonna have to tell me if it's easy or hard. I don't know, I don't know. I did it while I was, with many mental illnesses and enslaved and fighting for my life every day. So for me, it was hard. I did it with four altars in my head screaming. So for me, it was hard. I did it because I was desperate to get the answers to life, the universe and everything so I could escape the insanity that I was living. So for me, it was hard. And it took me 40 fucking years because my life was on the line. So for me, it was a matter of life and death. For me, it was hard. So I don't know if it's going to be easy or hard. I don't know if you guys will fly right through this with epiphany after epiphany after epiphany going, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. I, I don't know. It's going to be really cool when you do. That's exactly what it's like, by the way. Every day, you're going to be like, oh my God. Every day, it's fucking amazing. I love it when the epiphanies go off. It's amazing. And then there's physics for that. I'll show you the physics. It's so much fun. Oh my God. So I don't know how long it's going to take you. I don't know if it's going to be three months and poof, you're all the way through it. I don't know if it's going to be like two years. It's the full pilgrimage. You got to go through the 12 ethics three times. Oh, and here's the other part. Herculean trials. 12 Herculean trials. Yeah, those are them. Christ's 12 disciples. Yeah, those are them. Oh, oh, the 12 jurors. Yeah, you won for every ethic. Pilgrim's Progress. That was my first book. Pilgrim's Progress. Yeah, that's the second round. That's the second round. That's the second round. The Herculean trials is the first round. The Pilgrim's Progress is the second round. The, the, the second round is the, is the valley of shadow and death. There's no other word for it. It's the valley of shadow and death. It's hell. Beware of the oasis. Beware of the oasis. Don't get trapped in the oasis. Good God, I hated the oasis. The oasis is fuck dangerous. It's why it's like the very first lesson in Tridic Healing is like, you need to know about the oasis. Before you go in your healing journey, before you begin your pilgrimage, you must know about the oasis. Beware the oasis. Beware the oasis. Every one of us is gonna have a completely different experience. I strongly recommend you journal yours podcast it like I did. Put it on YouTube. Absolutely document it because you're going to have a different version of this. Every single one of you, every single one of you is going to be different. 
and I'm dying for some data so I can compare and see how my journey was different from everybody else's. I just need two more people so I can start doing like data research. But but four would be great. I would prefer four, but but oh my God, yes. As soon as the data starts coming in, I'm gonna be like, all right, let's go ahead and analyze this thing because I'm looking at analytics going, yes, mom. So, so that's, that's, yes, that's right. So the good news is a world that only by fire is now coming to an end. It's coming to an end. It's almost over. The dark ages are almost over. That's the first thing you learn is, oh my God, we're still in the dark ages. We are still in the dark ages. The whole age of enlightenment. Oh, that's bullshit. No, it wasn't. We're still in the dark ages. We are finally coming out of the dark ages because the education is coming back. Finally, finally, it's over. We made it. We made it. You have no idea. I'm going to do a celebration. There's going to be like a healing garden party. That's called Anna's Playground. It's already planned out. We're going to have a celebration. It's going to be like an eternal celebration of, you we made it. We did it. But but first things first, let's get the journey started. Go on the game. Get it started. It's just a bunch of movies, but I give you a whole lot of tasks with the movies. So you're just watching TV while you're solving the riddles in real life. RPG. You contact me. I'm the NPC. I set you on all these pilgrim quests like some creepy sage. I'm going to get a run of truth and I'm going to be like, oh, yes, you come for the next quest. I'm really looking forward to that part. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, it's happening. So thank you so much. And may the kindest of words always find you.